until you get home. It's 9 p.m. and your wife says you have no water. We have no water. What do you do? What do you do? Rule number one, don't panic. Remain calm. Okay, that's two rules. We don't have time for jokes, funny man. Okay, think back. On the way home, you heard a radio commercial. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Eureka. You saved the day. You remembered that Mike Scott Plumbing doesn't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. You are a genius. Hey, Mr. Genius, did you remember the phone number? Of course you did. Remember, you're a genius. 352-237-2888. Because at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Even if water's not running through it at this particular moment. Mike Scott Plumbing. Need help getting something awkward, large, or fragile, expertly packed, or custom crated and shipped? Call on the professionals at PacMail. PacMail can ship anything, anywhere, and will find the perfect solution to even the most difficult shipping problems. From that big screen TV to an antique china cabinet, no item is too large or too delicate for the professionals at PacMail. Go online to WeShipOcala.com. That's WeShipOcala.com. PacMail ships anything, anywhere. Here is your one-minute news brief. The second named storm of the season, Beryl, developed yesterday afternoon out in the central Atlantic. Beryl is not believed to be of any concern, especially for central Florida. A 32-year-old man has been arrested in Titusville after he kidnapped and robbed two women in central Florida before making his way down the state and robbing another. A 51-year-old Ocala man has been arrested after a loss prevention officer at Target witnessed the man masturbating in the swimsuit department while watching a 35-year-old woman. A former law enforcement officer accused of molesting a young girl was found dead in his jail cell from an apparent suicide in Pinellas County. Sheriff's deputies fatally shot a man who they say was holding two hostages inside a home yesterday morning in Eustis. And there will be a park dedication in Ocala today on Southeast 12th Street named in honor of Scotty J. Andrews. Andrews was the Ocala city manager until he retired in 1999. He passed away in 2015 at the age of 80. And that is your news brief from The Source. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Friday, a mix of clouds and sun with a thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening. High 85 to 88. Some clouds around Friday night, low 71 to 73. Saturday, mainly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. High 86 to 89. Sunday, partly sunny, a thunderstorm in the afternoon. High 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Steve Travis. On the first and third Wednesday mornings of each month at 9.05, Robert Colon will be with us from On Top of the World, Ocala's premier active adult community. Be sure to listen and be sure to call in. Speak with Robert to learn about all the exciting lifestyle and new home choices available at On Top of the World. From time to time, Robert will have guests and we're sure you will enjoy our little chat. You deserve the world and we bring it to you. So be sure to tune in on the first and third Wednesdays of each month right here on The Source, WOCA. In the good old summertime, it takes you back, doesn't it? Makes you think and remember? What did you do in the summertime when you were a kid? At Palm Garden of Ocala, we see folks who are young at heart, but their bodies are giving them a tough time. Our goal for every guest we serve is to bring them to their highest level of independence. Come visit us soon. We're located on the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street. And when you're in the hospital, ask for Palm Garden by name. All right, 24 minutes before 8 o'clock. Really nice looking Friday morning. I hope you have something fun planned for the weekend. If you don't, I have some ideas when Galen is on. Some uh, some, da- some dates, right? What, what, we call, what are we going to call this? What? Outdoor date ideas, I guess, is what we're doing. Yep. That's what we're calling But not right now. Right now we're doing the news. Okay. There was one news story I wanted to start with that is kind of interesting. I um, hope. Hope you all agree. Um, I just had to find it. I just had to find it. Here it is. Um, This was in the Washington Post. Researchers uh, might be able to confirm the authenticity of an engraved stone from a 16th century colony in Roanoke Island that has been dismissed as a forgery. Oh, my. So maybe it wasn't a forgery. If this stone is real, according to a geologist named Ed Schrader. If this stone is real, it's the most significant artifact in American history of early European settlement. Really? Isn't that something? Let's see. He, Ed Schrader, is the president of Brunel University in Georgia, where the stone is kept. 
He said, if it's not real, it's one of the most magnificent forgeries of all time. In 1587, a group of English colonists sent by Sir Walter Raleigh were sent to Roanoke Island in what is now North Carolina after a first settlement failed three years earlier. Included in the group were the colonists' leader, John White, and his daughter, Eleanor White Dare, and the son-in-law, Anasius, who was a stonemason. Okay. Soon after landing, Dare, the, uh, the, the son-in-law, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, had a daughter whom she named Virginia. Although, okay. although White left the group to return to England to plead for help for a colony that arrived too late to plant crops, his return was delayed by four years because of the Anglo-Spanish War. When he arrived, the colony was deserted. I guess we all remember learning that, right? Yeah. In 1937, the mystery of the settlement reemerged after a California tourist handed over a 21-pound engraved rock he said he had found in a swamp while traveling through North Carolina to Emory University in Atlanta. Gosh. 1937. On one side, the engraving appeared to be a grave marker, reading Anasius Dare and Virginia went hence unto heaven 1591. On ye Englishman shoe John White, Governor Gouverneur, something. Mm-hmm. On the other side, the inscription was much longer and appeared to address White as father, uh, saying, soon after you go for England, we came hither on lay Missouri and war to year. I don't know what that's supposed to say. Uh, ye salvages, feigned spirits, angry, a- angry, sedane, murder, I'll save, see, oh my gosh. Murder. What does it say? Okay. Uh, it was signed e- It was signed EWD, which would mean Eleanor White Dare. Mm-hmm. Soon afterward, additional stones started showing up and were ultimately exposed as worthless, casting doubt on the original stone. Now, researchers are taking another look at that first stone, intrigued by the letters etched on it, looked very different from the subsequent findings. Schrader had a sample of the stone analyzed at the University of North Carolina in Asheville, exposing the quartz's bright white interior in 2016. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting, so I guess we'll just kind of wait on that one. Super interesting. It is is interesting. Now, why would somebody... uh, hand over something that was a, a forgery. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless there was some in, intent of getting money for it. I, I, yeah. Of course, everything's not always about money. So. Yeah, most is. All right. Isn't that something? Um, that is pretty I, I guess the disturbing story of the morning is the fact that <clears throat> one of those uh, um, stranded soccer players has died down in, in Thailand, over in Thailand. Gosh. A Thai cave rescue diver working as part of the effort to save a soccer team trapped by floodwaters died. Oh, oh, one of the The, workers. The diver died. Oh, one of the divers died. Okay, the diver died. Okay, yeah, okay, I didn't hear it right. Uh, SEAL Commander Arpakorn Yukong Kao told a news conference this morning that the former Thai Navy SEAL was working in a volunteer capacity (laughs) and died during an overnight mission in which he was placing oxygen canisters... He said, while underwater, the rescuer passed out and efforts to resuscitate him failed. Oh, my God. And he's a Navy SEAL. So he knows what he's doing. He's not like somebody that just jumped in with no experience. Yeah. And that just underscores why it's it's taking so long. Because, you know, when you first heard the story, you thought, okay, so they give these kids some some, uh, aqualungs, whatever, Uh and they swim out with them. Like you say, the buddy system, and they're out. But I guess it's much, much, much more perilous than we realize right yeah very much so yeah. the water keeps rising and they keep pumping it out and oh, this is just so devastating wow it is amazing that they're even alive i i don't really understand how they got in there i don't really think i know that story no i i, I don't either so. i'm not sure uh let's see we have a storm out in the atlantic but the mm-hmm. meteorologists say don't worry about it <laughs> That should be a weather. Famous last words, right? That's how I'd be, I'd be a good weather. It's out there, but come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at this thing. It's hardly developing. Yeah, go to the beach this weekend. You'll be fine. So this is the second named storm of the year. It's Beryl, B-E-R-Y-L. Mm-hmm. Beryl. Okay. B-E-R-Y-L. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what the first one was? No. Alberto. Oh, okay. Alberto. Back in May. So Beryl must be a girl's name then. I think, yeah, I think that's how they do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, they say it's probably going to just fizzle out into nothing, although it is expected to reach hurricane status today. But they say there's all kinds of reasons why they believe it won't go much farther than today. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is another disturbance between Bermuda and the United States. That's kind of uh, way out there. Um, but that also is not being given a whole lot of concern, although it could create some uh, undercurrents and some boating hazards for those boaters off mm-hmm. the coast of North Carolina, it says here. Whatever happened to Bermuda? I mean, way back when, when I was growing up in the in the 60s and people were going on vacation. Oh, why is they, it not a destination anymore? Yeah, they would say we're going to Bermuda. Even even the movie, the cartoon, The Sword in the Stone, uh, Merlin disappeared for a while. And then when he was summoned back, he was in his uh, uh, shorts and uh, T-shirt and sandals. And he said, I've been having fun in Bermuda. So <laughs> what, what happened to Bermuda? Well, why I, is it like not the destination anymore? I think I know, Robin. It's, okay. It's the shorts. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. The shorts and the flowered shirts, huh? It's just, it's not that they're ugly. It's just that nobody wants to see them. (laughs) You see? Now, places that have bikinis as their kind of their their go to image. Yes. A lot of people show up. Oh, that's right. I mean, think about Ocala. Uh We wouldn't have Ocala if it weren't for those pictures of those underwater girls. That's right. I know nobody wants to believe that. Nobody wants to admit that. It's the truth. But that's why those guys from Michigan came to Florida. They came to Ocala. Yeah, that's right. They were looking at the newspaper. They saw those Bruce Mozart pictures. Yep. They said, um, you know, they, close, they, they turn the page. Then they go to, the, to dinner with their, their wives and children and say, kids and honey, I'm thinking about taking the family on a trip to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> really? What's there? Oh, there's some beautiful water. Mm-hmm. Nice. It'd be nice. We should just go. Yeah, you can go swimming there. And he never, beach. he probably never said there's girls underwater. No, probably not, just, right? Just, <laughs> right? He probably like, I know how men that think. to himself. Uh, oh, yeah, this is how men think, yes. This is how we think. We can have just to get to a place where we can say, oh. Meanwhile, in Detroit, there's plenty of pretty girls walking down the street, but no, I got to get to Florida because they're in bikinis. Yeah, there you, you go. You see? Yeah. Uh, just I saying, got it now. Just saying, I don't know why, but yeah. it's the way we're built, I guess. Well, you're my go-to fella then for my go-to <laughs> man questions. I am. Well, and the only reason I am is not because I know more than other men, but because I will be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you I will. will. I will tell you the truth. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. We do have some others, more serious stuff. Uh, this, oh, there's a park dedication today. How many of you remember Scotty Andrews? I do. Yeah. Um, he is uh, being remembered today. He passed away in 2015. He was 80 when he passed away. But for those of you who remember the 90s, he was the uh, the city manager for most of that time, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, he retired in 1999. And uh, so there's a park that will be called the Scotty J. Andrews Park on Southeast 12th Street. Um, I don't know the exact address. But anyway, so that's, that's really nice that they're doing that for him. That's well, very nice. There's, very I'm, nice. I'm guessing, nice his, I'm guessing his family is still in the area, right? Probably. Probably, yeah. So, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Good morning, you're on the air. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Um, let's see, uh, the first uh, the first album that I bought for myself was a, uh, a Stan Kenton album, Adventures in Blues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, nice. Uh, uh, but the, the, the folks had a, a pretty good vinyl collection. Uh, they, they mostly like Broadway show tunes, and so... Uh, they had a lot of Broadway albums. Nice, nice. Yeah, South my, Pacific, My Fair Lady, uh, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was in my parents' collection too. Those things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Fun topic. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate the call. Uh, well, have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Do you know, there, there's a there's a little bar in uh, Lower Manhattan called uh, the Gold Bar. And um, a clever name. <laughs> yeah. It is the Gold Bar. I think that's cool. Yeah, and the music, mm-hmm. everything is like you, like you're going back in time. That's the whole theme. Uh-huh. You go into this bar and it's back in time. And and so I was listening to this podcast talking about it, and they said it was an area. And, oh, and they play old old music, like like from the 40s. Mm-hmm. So you go into this place, and everybody's like back in time. And so it's like that's kind of cool, right? The Gold Bar. So it's in a, a neighborhood in New York. Now I. I really think a lot of the names of these neighborhoods are newer than when I was familiar with these names. Uh huh. So this is called. Uh, let me think. Uh, 
oh my gosh. Nolita. Nolita. It's the Nolita neighborhood, okay? Okay. I, I think. Which which is an abbreviation for north of Little Italy, okay? Okay. So, okay. I know, so I know where it is. Right, it's right around the corner from where my dad worked. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, back in the day. Okay. But anyway, I just thought I would share that. So it, it is kind of a trending thing right now to uh, put up establishments, restaurants, or, or um, coffee houses mm-hmm. um, that go back in time. L- like um, this trend we had yesterday about brunches. Yes. After we did the segment on brunches, um, we put it up as a podcast, and somebody on YouTube said, it's not only a trend in where you are, because I guess they thought we were just talking about here, which, uh-huh. which we weren't, but they were saying it's a trend all over the country. This guy was in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Uh, to have brunch as as um, a, f- a featured meal in, in restaurants now. Mm-hmm. So you have like four meals on the on the menu. You have breakfast, brunch, mm-hmm. lunch, uh-huh. and dinner or supper, depending on where you grew up, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. From what, I, what the guy said. Mm-hmm. A 51-year-old man was arrested. He was in Target masturbating, Robin. Yeah, gosh, I heard your news this morning. I thought, where was I? (laughs) Well, you weren't in Target, Robin. (laughs) His Target was a 35-year-old woman who was in there looking at bathing suits. Uh Uh-huh. And he decided to pull his pants down and, uh, well, I don't need to finish that sentence, do I? So anyway, he was observed by surveillance camera. Mm-hmm. The uh, loss prevention officer, the security yes. guard for the store, mm-hmm. um, called police and they looked at the tape and they arrested him. Did she notice him or did the, guy, uh, did she, the guard notice him and take him away before she noticed him? Um, the guard noticed, but she was to talk. They asked her about it and uh, they, they don't name her in the story, which is a good thing. Uh, but she said, I noticed the creepy old guy <laughs> looking at me. Uh-huh. But I didn't see anything as far as masturbating. So, mm-hmm. but gosh. Gosh, on behalf wow. of on behalf of all men, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we we are hardwired in a crazy crazy way, but most of us know how to control it all. You know. Just, yeah, yeah, but no, he needs to get locked up. He is locked up. Good, I'm glad. He can stay there. Uh, he can make friends see. over there um, behind the bars. A man kidnapped and robbed two women. In Central Florida, in Castleberry, uh, and then stole a car from a TV station, and then drove to Titusville and robbed another woman who has been arrested. In uh, Eustace, in Eustace, yesterday morning, sheriff's deputies from Lake County shot a man who was holding two hostages. The hostages are okay. The man is dead. Good. Good. I was in Eustace. That's not too far, huh? No, not too far at all. It's funny. The article said Eustace near Orlando. Isn't Eustace closer to Ocala? Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, Let's see. What else do I have? Um, Some immigrant U.S. Army reservists and recruits who enlisted in the military with a promised path to citizenship are being discharged quietly. Hmm. The Associated Press was unable to quantify how many men and women who enlisted through the special recruitment program have been booted from the Army, but immigration attorneys say they know of more than 40 who have been discharged or whose status has been questionable. So are they automatic citizens now, or are they... Yeah, that's a good question. Wow. Um, Harvard lawyer Alan Dershowitz who has revealed he has become an outcast at his vacation retreat on Martha's Vineyard, said yesterday one snob warned she wanted to stab him right through the heart. Oh, my God. One snob. What did he do? In remarks to Fox News' Tucker Carlson, Dershowitz said the threat came at a party at a summer destination for the rich and famous. At a party this week, he said, at Martha's Vineyard, she said, if Dershowitz were here tonight, I would stab him through the heart. This is a Martha's Vineyard woman saying she would stab me through the heart, he said. Uh, I I don't know who he is. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed to say. um, We actually had him on the show. He was talking about his book or something. Oh, A long time ago. I have to look him up. Uh, Professor Nicholas Negroponte allegedly is the ringleader in a push to isolate Dershowitz because of his defense of President Donald Trump. 
There you go. Gosh. Uh, China's foreign ministry said retaliatory duties on U.S. goods took effect immediately this morning after Washington's 25% tariff on selected imports to China kicked in at 12.01 a.m. this morning. A Chinese government spokesman earlier said that should... Uh, said they should said that should the tariffs be adopted, China will be forced to fight back. However, today's thirty-four billion dollar proposed measure is just the first stage in threatened U.S. increases on up to four hundred fifty billion dollars of imports from China over their technological prowess. Many fear a trade war is on the horizon for the global economy as the United States continues to place tariffs on trading partners, including the European Union, Mexico, and Canada. See that? That gives people in the United States that have countries that produce those same goods to produce them over here. And then they'll make money, they'll hire workers, and, you know, we'll keep everything made in America. On this date, 1963, James Brown, the hardest working man in show business. The, the, the <laughs> late, great James Brown. Is that right? <laughs> That's what they used to say about him. Do you remember that? I didn't remember that. James Brown went to number two on the U.S. album chart with Live at the Apollo. Recorded on the night of October 24th, 1962 at Brown's own expense. It spent 66 weeks on the Billboard Albums chart. In 2003, the album was ranked number 24 on Rolling Stone Magazine's list of 500 greatest albums of all time. When I was a kid, there, were, there was always this talk about this place called the Apollo mm-hmm. in Harlem. And I was, I was forbidden from going into the city at all. But I think my father might have known I was going into the city. Because you were like 14, right? Right. And then, but, but anyway, I was told, you don't go up to Harlem. Because <laughs> I think you heard us talking about going <laughs> to see some of the uh, performers that we like. Yeah, parents know everything, let me tell you. <clears throat> well, Mostly everything. It would, have been, it would have been late at night. We were kids. So. Thai authorities. Oh, we had this one already. Sorry. That that story out of Thailand is just an unbelievable story. It is. It's horrible. But like you, I don't know what they were doing in that cave to begin with. So, The San Fermin Festival officially kicks off today in Spain. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that is. It's also known as the running of the bulls. Oh, okay. I don't. I know that name. More than a million tourists will visit the festival. It lasts for nine days. Every morning, the bulls will run through the streets. <laughs> wow. Uh, last year, two Americans and one Spaniard were gored while running from the bulls. Mm-hmm. Other runners were treated for their bruises. Last year, Pamplona, Spain city officials, um, rather this year, Pamplona, Spain city officials are trying to reassure women that the festival is still safe to attend after protests ensured that the release on bail of the Wolf Pack, five men who were cleared of gang raping a teenager <sighs> during the festival in 2016. God, that's horrible. Some women plan on wearing black outfits instead of the traditional white as a protest. Gosh. Well, yeah. I mean, hey, I will protest people who do bad things every day. Exactly. We do it every day. Yeah, we, we do. Most of most of humanity protests people who do bad things. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It, it is a mistake to start to think that somehow a news item represents the world mm-hmm. or the majority of the people who fit the same description as the perpetrator. Yeah, exactly. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, guys. Hey, Hugh. See, uh, when President Clinton was president, he uh, bought some property in Harlem. And uh, it more or less, of course, this goes back in the 80s, I guess. And, and uh, it, it kind of like started a, what they would call a residence, a residence uh, in that area. And uh, on a program not too long ago I was watching, uh, they say some of the areas in Harlem are rather pricey right now, and it's really uh, has made a big turn. That's what I understand, yeah. My, that, that what you just said is true for pretty much all of Manhattan. When I went up with Robin, it was, it was so different, and when I went up with my son, it was so different. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, but you know, like with Harlem, like you know, when you were a younger child, you know, your your dad was a cop, and you know, you know, if you're a white guy, you went into Harlem, you might not come out. You know, at that time, that's how bad it was. But from what I saw and heard, it's uh, completely changed, and it's uh, like I say, it, it, some of the areas are rather pricey, and it's really made a, a wonderful residence for, for everybody. Yeah, the, the 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 white guy is in danger in Harlem. Rumor though. Um I mean, I know there are stories to support that, but it wasn't really true. I mean, my old, the older kids in my neighborhood were going all the time. That's why we wanted to go. But we oh, oh we, yeah. We didn't go. So. 
Is, is that like a, like a tourist attraction right now? The Apollo? I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say, yeah. It's probably but still I mean, the uh, uh, well, maybe some of the I don't know. I guess some parts of it are, yeah. Yeah. Is it one of the oldest uh, uh, suburbs in uh, New York? It, well, it's not considered a suburb. Um, it's considered a neighborhood, I guess you would say. Um, and I think so. I think yeah, Harlem, and, and then later Spanish Harlem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a very interesting place now. Yeah. In fact, Harlem is mentioned in uh, the George Washington story. So yeah, it's got to be one of the oldest. Even though back then it was the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wooded area, yeah. Okay, well, if I ever get to New York again, which I've been there several times, I probably will make a side trip to there and see what, uh, what's going on. There you go. Yeah, get, get some uh, yeah souvenirs. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, research suggests the family of Anne Frank, the world-famous diary writer, a young girl. How old was she when she died? 14? 14, I think, yeah. Um... Research suggests that her family attempted to immigrate to the United States and later also to Cuba, but their efforts were thwarted by American restrictive immigration policies at the outbreak of World War II. Yeah, see that? Even they had to follow the rules. The Anne Frank House in Amsterdam and the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum said this morning that documents indicate Anne's father, Otto, tried twice to collect the papers needed to obtain visas for the United States. He later also appears to have applied for a visa to Cuba. However, the Frank family's escape efforts were all in vain. Eventually, they went into hiding, as you know, in Amsterdam in the back of that house. Mm -hmm. Or the upstairs of that house. God had other plans. Well, her book definitely opened up our eyes as to what was going on. Yeah, but the United States knew, and they didn't do anything at first. We didn't know everything. No, not everything, but they knew. Pope Francis is urging governments to make good on their commitments to curb climate change. Warning that continued unsustainable development and rampant consumption threatened to turn the earth into a vast pile of rubble, deserts, and refuse. Francis made the appeal this morning at a Vatican conference marking the third anniversary of his landmark environment uh, encyclical called Praise Be, the document meant to spur action. Oh, my gosh. It, it, and it, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to say, let's all get on board this idea of keeping the world clean. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely a wonderful thing. I'm just surprised that the Pope would be like a latecomer with that. Exactly. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. We are bringing back our wealth from foreign countries that have been ripping us off for years. President Trump at a rally in Montana just before new tariffs on some Chinese products kicked in at midnight. The Chinese government has responded with the same 25% tax on American products with a heavy focus on agriculture. The president says tariffs on more Chinese goods will be imposed in two weeks, with more likely after that. The president says now former Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Scott Pruitt is a terrific guy who resigned by choice rather than be a distraction. Pruitt steps down amid multiple allegations against him of abusing his power and misusing taxpayer money. In his resignation letter, Pruitt says he stepped down because of the personal attacks on he and his family. Fox's Edward Lawrence in D.C. EPA Deputy Andrew Wheeler takes over as acting administrator on Monday. He's a former coal company lobbyist. Fox News. We report. You decide. I'm a one-trick pony, literally. I show up at kids' parties and act cute. That's pretty much it. So excuse me for being bitter when Geico says not only could we save you money on car insurance, but we do more, like give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or even via our award-winning mobile app. Well, ooh la la, aren't they multi-talented? <laughs> hey, I said organic carrots. <laughs> Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Napa Know How. This week only, Napa Full Synthetic Motor Oil is on sale for just $2.99 a quart. Wait, what? $2.99? That's got to be wrong. Let me fact check that real quick here. Well, I'll be a minivan's uncle. The sludge fighting, long lasting protection of Napa Full Synthetic is just $2.99 a quart. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. General states pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer available July 1st through July 8th. 
Here is your one-minute news brief. The second named storm of the season, Beryl, developed yesterday afternoon out in the central Atlantic. Beryl is not believed to be of any concern, especially for central Florida. A 32-year-old man has been arrested in Titusville after he kidnapped and robbed two women in central Florida before making his way down the state and robbing another. A 51-year-old Ocala man has been arrested after a loss prevention officer at Target witnessed the man masturbating in the swimsuit department while watching a 35-year-old woman. A former law enforcement officer accused of molesting a young girl was found dead in his jail cell from an apparent suicide in Pinellas County. Sheriff's deputies fatally shot a man who they say was holding two hostages inside a home yesterday morning in Eustis. And there will be a park dedication in Ocala today on Southeast 12th Street named in honor of Scotty J. Andrews. Andrews was the Ocala city manager until he retired in 1999. He passed away in 2015 at the age of 80. And that is your news brief from The Source. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Friday, a mix of clouds and sun with a thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening. High 85 to 88. Some clouds around Friday night, low 71 to 73. Saturday, mainly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. High 86 to 89. Sunday, partly sunny, a thunderstorm in the afternoon. High 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I am meteorologist Steve Travis. What's on sale this week at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens? Check the ad. Just about everything's reduced and priced to sell. You ask for more of those dogwood azaleas, and now Bob Wines has them. These variegated dogwood azaleas regularly sell for $7.99. But this week, Bob has them for just $2.99. Bob continues his fabulous buy one, get one on crepe myrtles. Take your pick, any size, any color. You buy one, you get one free, and the larger ones are delivered, planted, and guaranteed. And listen to this. All shade trees, buy one at Bob's low price and get one for half price for a limited time only. The savings are truly spectacular. So check the ad and head to Bob Wines on Southeast 38th Street. Daily till 430, Saturdays till 3, in the same blooming place since 1952. Get equipped for anything with a John Deere 3025E compact tractor from AgPro. It's equipped with a low price of $139 per month, and we've got all the attachments you'll ever need. Request a quote at agproco.com. Offer ends for 3018, subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. 20% down payment required. Taxes, freight, setup, and delivery charges could increase monthly payment. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Lisa McGinnis, editor of Ocala Magazine and host of Ocala Magazine Radio. Join me every Friday at 10 a.m. when we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life. There's only